I was around eight months old the first time that I felt different. I'd been sick twice in as many months, and I had interpreted it, misinterpreted it, as being different. The problem with feeling different is that it's a barrier. It can be a barrier to connection. And connection is a fundamental human need. Growing up in Indiana, I had a ton of examples of what it meant to be a successful person, a successful human being. But they were all very similar. They were all the same. They were white, Christian, and straight. So I went all in on fitting in, whether that was participating in sports, being good in school, or just being good. I took note of everything that I got negative feedback on, whether it was acting girly or, God forbid, doing something gay. I locked it away, I pushed it down, and I kept it in a little box, never to be seen or heard from again. I did what society told me to do, told me would make me happy, would make me successful. I got the degrees. I landed the jobs. I made money. I even married the beautiful girl. But as each of these things at least seemed to fail me, I was left with the one thing that had been there all along, the false connection of addiction the false connection of alcohol and later drugs, the thing that had made it safe for me to be seen. But the good news is, I found that it only takes a little bit of light to illuminate the darkness, and even the darkness of addiction. And I was letting it in. I was letting it in through the people around me, through the cooperative components of YouTube, <laughs> and from a song that came to me in Hindi that was actually telling me to not give up on life, that life is always changing, and to focus on the positive. Well, I don't speak Hindi, but to me, this was proof that God had my back. I came up with the brilliant idea, it seems obvious, to open the blinds of my apartment to see this view. And I noticed that the more I appreciated it, the more its value appreciated. Little did I know I was allowing in gratitude. I was raising my vibration. And I knew that to move forward, I had to reach an emotion of happiness or joy. So I heard that if you say affirmations, you can, you can do that. And I started saying what I needed to be. I needed to be strong. So I said, I am strong. And within, a short period of time, about six months, I put all my stuff in storage and gone on my own eat, pray, love journey. And on that journey, I started to reconnect to myself, reconnect to others, family, friends, and new people, mentors. And I found out that it does require dope to find hope. <laughs> And of course, I don't mean that. I mean desire, focused desire, observation, observation and awareness, positivity, positivity of emotion, of, of perspective. And it also requires new life experience. But to have a new life experience, you have to have a compass and a vision for that life experience. So I charted a course to the vision that I wanted for my life. And I had to evaluate what was I committed to. If I was drinking and doing drugs, I was committed to that. So I had to get, get new commitments that would move me towards little goals that move towards my vision. And importantly, I needed to understand the conviction the belief that was underlying it all. Remember that little eight-month-old boy? He had developed a belief that he was a disappointment, that he was different and couldn't connect. I found that out through hypnosis, through rapid transformational therapy. 
And it allowed me to let go and forgive myself and everyone else and connect to myself on a different level, spiritually, uh, from a learning standpoint, just a deeper connection that allowed me to move and connect better with my community. There were people that I needed to let go of, but there were so many people that I could add that would help to move me on that journey. And then lastly, the, the sixth C is communication. I understood that I had to start talking to myself differently because your mind is always listening. And if you say it, it must be true. So I had to start telling myself a better story. But the purpose of this talk is really about what I learned and what I know about addiction. And addiction is not a disease. It is a disconnection. It's not a life sentence, but it's always an attempt to escape pain. So we can do that by connecting to ourselves, connecting to others, and connecting to a higher why. And it can start, it's simple, it's not always easy, but it can start with something as, like the words that I say to myself every day. I am strong. I am enough. I am worthy. And so are each and every one of you. Thank you for watching.